I met a gypsy. When you went, you said you went from that factory KTM in Europe to then a production KTM in the US. What is the difference? And there was one of the things I wanted to talk about was just like the evolution of KTM because you were there in the dog days of summer on the the KTM and and you rode that bike when it it wasn't app it was apples to oranges you know like you couldn't throw a blanket over the KTM that you raced and and the pro circuit bike that was you know on the other end. So what was that experience like to go through? Well. It was interesting because, you know, I I feel like the the term factory is 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 thrown around a lot, but no one really knows the the true definition of it. But when when I was in Europe my first year, I was I did a, a European championship at the end of '97 and caught the eye of 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 Harry. I don't know if I so much caught his eye, or if it was more that my dad and my main sponsor went and found those people and were like, hey watch this kid like you know hello we're here to make sure you pay attention otherwise you kind of can slip through the cracks um so anyway i got to ride with harry and um it was there again a privateer kawasaki team that had help from you know a variety of sponsors and and they gave me a great platform to get my feet wet when ktm approached um i still remember my dad said hey here's the way we got to look at it it's the best offer we have. He goes, they're paying for everything. And he goes, if you don't win, people will blame the bike. If you do win, they'll, they'll think, wow, this guy's even even better than we thought he was. So he goes, I feel like it's it, it's, it's a, a win-win. no-brainer. So when, we, so when we signed with KTM, we've got to go to the factory and all that. And I, and I, and I got to take my hats off to those guys. They, um, considering they, were, they bought KTM out of bankruptcy, they made a lot of things happen very quickly. And I know they put a lot of the emphasis in the 500s and, you know, with Shane winning for them and Shane King. And um, then it was like, all right, now we want to go in the 125 class. But they had this kind of mindset of we're not going to, it's not going to be a long rollout process. We're going to throw everything and the kitchen sink at it because we want to be successful from the get go. And I remember like, I was thinking, oh, this is pretty cool. So the first time I even got to see and and they fired up the KTM and I was like, wow, that thing sounds pretty wicked, you know? And I'm looking at it, I'm like, it looks a lot different to a Cowie, you know, it was a European brand and it just, everything about it looked different. The gas tank, the seat, the, the shrouds. Um, but I do remember from the moment I got on it, I remember thinking, wow, this bike has quite a bit of power. And, and, I, and it got better and better, but... The problem that we had in, in the winter testing in Europe is this bike blew up every five minutes and I was getting a little nervous. I had I had uh, the whole crank and piston and everything go through the bottom of the casings. Like you tip the bike over, you could see the <laughs> whole internals. That's a proper let go. And uh, yeah, like we had, we had a few of those and um, and then it's, you know, it's like, um, it's probably like Formula One, MotoGP, you fix that problem you're like okay that broke after five laps okay we fixed that then on lap seven something else breaks you fix that then after lap 10 something else broke so i i remember that being a little bit nervous at one point of just the reliability um but however i don't remember all the details i remember we did a lot of testing and i remember they just brought stuff like nobody's business they did not skimp on product they were like there's a bunch of frames they're all different we'll run through them and i'm like what they don't have engines in them no 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 no. we'll build the bike after you're done with it you know make sure you're done with that setup so we can peel all of that into that chassis and i was like wait we're gonna do that today oh yeah i was thinking i've never been at a track from before sunrise till till dusk you know so every we went we busted out our motos and within three or four hours we were done for the day i mean these were literal sun up sundown days and but i really enjoyed feeling the the progression and seeing what was happening and getting comfortable and going okay this went from a foreign feeling motorcycle they would have different swing arms different shock bodies different shock lengths different clamps different diameter forks different reeds different pistons different cranks different cylinders i mean everything they had sand cast casings because they were one-offs and I remember thinking, this is pretty cool. Like, I mm. this is the definition of factory. So 
as much as I wasn't a high profile rider getting paid a million dollars, they wanted to make sure I succeeded. And I, obviously it makes them look good. If I'm doing well, they're, they're gonna look good and sell motorcycles. But from the end of the tail end of 98 uh, to two weeks before the first GP in like April or whenever it was, that six months, I mean, we they did not let off the gas pedal. And uh, I remember 99 thinking, I think my bike was the fastest. I think the KTMs were the fastest that year, but I don't think they handled the best. And what was kind of cool was, you know, they had bought out WP. And I think that's when they were like, hey, WP, we need you guys to kind of go next level with, 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 you know, development and that. So by the end of 99, um, so in 99, I won my first GP. I actually dominated the German Grand Prix and it kind of came out of nowhere because um, I remember a few people going, where did that come from? I'm like, I don't know. I've been trying all season, but it just clicked. And it was just a type of track that worked for me. And I think it worked really good for that KTM. A little bit sandy because I had this debate where I said they were convinced that the PDS was better than a linkage. Mm. And then I started putting two and two together where we where they did a lot of their testing and training in the winter in Europe sand. and that had to be these kind of sand tracks and that. And I personally believe that the PDS works better in the sand because it just it's the the it's driving the rear wheel into the ground because you got the shock that's just pushing the 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 swing arm into the ground. So your wheel is touching the ground more than anyone and it had great horsepower. But when we went to places that were like just those like real square edge bump, hard pack tracks, we struggled. And um, they came out, I, I still remember just, I felt like every time they brought a new fork or a new shock, I'm like, this thing just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The diameters were getting bigger, but you know, they tried everything. And uh, I would say going into 2000, even though I knew there were one or two spots, I felt like the KTM maybe didn't handle quite the best. And it was typically just rear acceleration from the middle to the exit of turns when they got really choppy besides that that bike was incredible it turned so good uh the power was awesome i got a lot of whole shots which obviously makes life a lot easier i didn't realize at the end of this i i don't know how or what but we didn't really understand that going to america where they have a production rule things were going to change because i had a full-fledged factory bike mm. you could have said even though there were four or five factory KTM guys, I think our bikes were all different. We all had different frames, different swing arms, and that's the beauty of GPs. It's pretty much, as long as it's got 125 cc's and a couple other rules, run what you brung. And KTM made the most of that. So like I said, when I came to America and had to get on a production bike, it was a significant step backwards in my opinion. Mm. And I didn't factor that in, you know, because in Europe, the Cowies were slow, were known as the slowest bikes, and they just didn't perform, they didn't do that great, you know. In the, in the two years I was on KTM, so in my head I'm coming to America, going KTM's the new brand. It's the brand to be on, and uh, there again I hadn't had Supercross experience without a linkage, which I yeah, think also deal. was a mistake because I I struggled a lot with confidence in the whoops, and and you know you start thinking it's me more than the bike until I went to pro circuit years later and I was just like, oh, this is beautiful. I've never felt so confident hitting whoops. So pros and cons with, with both decisions and both uh, bikes um, at different times. But yeah, that, that, that factory KTM, I really do believe was just the outright best bike on the, on the line at that time in the world championship. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.